I've been uh, quite busy lately and so I haven't produced a lot of videos and so this video itself will be quite short and simple and it's based on a question I've received a few times since I've been doing my Python for MetaTrader series and the questions they're similar they are basically asking what advantages are there to using Python and why am I using Python rather than MetaTrader or rather than MQL so the answers are, are quite simple. Um, firstly, why do people want to use Python rather than MQL? There are some people who are simply more comfortable with Python. They're used to it and they would rather write their code in Python. The other might be where you want to use some specific modules available in Python that are perhaps very mature in Python or just simply not available in MetaTrader. And the one that comes to mind always is uh, machine learning. So if you wanted to use machine learning, you would probably use Python. To the second part of the question, I suppose, why am I producing a series on using Python and that answer is very simple because there's an audience for it and that's sort of the end to that question but I thought that I would just demonstrate the difference by using the last code that I wrote for Python on this channel and I'll do exactly the same thing in MetaTrader so you can get a bit of a comparison between the two. Now on the screen I have the trading bot Pi, which is meant to be a kind of general purpose wrapper, although uh, it will need to evolve if you want to do more complex code. Then there's the rsi.py, which is the uh, trading strategy, and it sort of mimics what you would get in MetaTrader. There's the initialization, and then the next, which is probably the on-tick event, and so on. And then I've got the config.json, which mimics the inputs for MetaTrader. So with all of that, I have the MetaTrader editor open and I have created here in experts this two level RSI, two level RSI.mq5 and I've just put in the comment and these property statements to begin with. I do want to use an import here in MetaTrader. I only need the one include statement that trade.mqh that comes with MetaTrader and that's because this is such a simple expert advisor, it doesn't really need much more. The next thing to look at here are the inputs, and I put all of those in config.json. Now some of these inputs were obviously there to support running the test, where in MetaTrader you would simply start up the system in a testing mode. But other things, the symbol and the time frame are going to come from the chart, but then I have the magic number, the volume, all the rest of these. They would need to be inputs in MetaTrader. So here I've put them all as inputs and there's nothing very different so far between the two. Now if I look at the strategy file here, the rsi.py, inside the rsi trend class, I've got some, I guess these would be equivalent to global constants in MetaTrader because I set them up as class variables here. Remember that this kind of emulates the MetaTrader on init and this is the on tick. So these would be global variables, given they're class variables, they exist outside this function. So these would be global variables in MetaTrader and I need some of those. So here are the globals that I need. There's the RSI handle, which will give me access to the RSI indicator, short trigger set and long trigger set. Now, let me mention also, I called these high trigger set and low trigger set. I've simply changed the names of them. So the high trigger has now become the short because I'm selling when it's high and the low triggers become long because I'm buying when it's low. And I also have this C trade trade, which is my way of accessing this include. So the next thing is to duplicate any other work that would have been done here in the init. And apart from setting a couple of values, there was just the one recalculate indicators. In the MetaTrader version, instead of calling recalculate indicators, I'm setting up the handle to the indicator here. Uh, and a test then to see that that handle was created correctly. I'm setting up these two variables the same way, setting them both to false because the triggers are not set. And then I also have this set expert magic number just because that's the way we handle that in MetaTrader. I'm assigning the INP magic into that trade object. So then into the next, and this is the equivalent of the MetaTrader on tick. The first thing I'm doing is grabbing self equals self dot RSI minus one. Now, while this looks very simple, remember there was work in the background to calculate that, and it's down here in this function. Not a lot of work, but there's still some work to calculate the array of RSI values that allows me to simply call this value equals self.rsi. So in the MetaTrader version, I'm still grabbing a variable called value, 
and I'm calling that from a function get RSI, or I'm getting that value from a function called get RSI. So let's jump straight down and create the get RSI function. And here is get RSI, and I'm simply passing in the index, which is the bar number that I want to get the RSI value for. And I'm just using the copy buffer to get that from the RSI handle and returning that one value. The next is the actual strategy part from Python. Um, and obviously most of these statements are duplicated for long and sell, but if the value, which is the RSI value, is greater than the trigger, then I set various triggers and set other triggers off, and the same if it's below the low trigger. Here is the same code in MetaTrader. If the value is greater than the input short trigger, then the short trigger set is true and the long trigger set is false, and then the opposite if it's below the long trigger. So those statements are very similar to the Python statements. And then we have the code to actually execute the trades. Um, so if the triggers are set and the value has dropped below the entry point on the high, then I get the price, the stop loss, take profit, and I sell, and then just reset the triggers and the opposite if the price is going the other way. And this is where it will start to look a little different in MetaTrader because I'm not going to be using a sell and a buy function and those functions themselves did some work with the stop loss and the take profit. And also in MetaTrader, I can't return multiple values from a single call. So this get entry price function returned the price, the stop loss and the take profit. So this is going to look a little different. Here is the MetaTrader version of those same lines. If the short trigger set and the value is less than the entry, then I'm calling a single function open position, order type cell, and in there is where I'm going to calculate the take profit, stop loss, and the entry price. And then I just reset the two triggers. And the same in the opposite direction I call with an order type buy. So now the open position function, and remember some of this code in the Python side was already written as part of the libraries. Um, so once you've got this function once, you don't really need to rewrite it for each expert. But the first thing I want to do, I'm grabbing the current tick, and if I can't get the current tick with the symbol info tick, then I'm just going to return false because that tick tells me the bid and ask prices. Next is to actually get that entry price and depending whether I'm buying or selling. So if type is a buy, then I get the ask price. And if it's not a buy, then I get the bid price. So that gives me the appropriate entry price. And I'm also setting up this multiplier. It's a double. And again, if it's order type buy, then that's a one. And if it's not order type buy, then it's a minus one. I set up the stop loss and take profit inside this function instead of having a separate function to get them. And the stop loss is just price minus the stop loss input multiplied by the multiplier. And that's why I have this multiplier. So if I'm buying, that's going to be one. And if I'm selling, it's going to be minus one. So if I'm buying, then the stop loss is price minus one multiplied by the stop loss input. And the same then for take profit, getting the input take profit here. After that, I just call the trade object with position open and I'm using a chart symbol, the type which was passed in here to the function, the volume that was input, price, stop loss and take profit that were calculated here, and then the trade comment that was input as well. And that's it. So for these simple examples, not much difference. And for more complex examples, you'll find that the code also works in much the same way. Uh, but as I said, if you're comfortable with Python, then by all means use that. The disadvantage that I find with using Python is that it doesn't have a function for backtesting the same that MetaTrader has. So in MetaTrader, the client terminal simply takes over the position of the broker and will process your expert advisor tick by tick and give you somewhat similar results to those you would have had from real live trading. In Python, the backtesting modules are more oriented towards giving you a general view of how well your strategy works rather than simulating the actual trading that you will do. But again, there are modules like uh, machine learning in Python that are much more advanced than some of the libraries you could download for MetaTrader and you might prefer to use those. Anyway, that's my simple explanation of why I've been creating the Python series. I don't have very many more in that series and a lot of the recent work has been focused on allowing you to do backtesting because that's important, but I'm going to somewhat abandon that to go in other directions in the future.
If you've had some value from this, then please click the like button. It will help the channel. And if you want to see more videos, then click subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when the next video is released. Thank you for watching.